introducing. So in this presentation, uh, I would like to try to explain uh, what was the ways we were trying to deal with quite a problematic task, how to present something, what is basically invisible. Luckily, the very rapid development of information technologies, the accessibility of internet, and the overwhelming scale of the adoption of computer technologies in recent years have created room for a change in presentation of archaeological features and their reconstructions. In certain sense, it is now possible to create a parallel virtual heritage layer within the analog reality. The main goal of our project is to demonstrate the possibilities of presentation of prehistoric sites in location when there is neither any preserved construction nor any relic of the original landscape. With some exceptions, uh, remains of prehistoric settlements <coughs> in Central Europe are essentially invisible in the landscape. This fact, this fact represents a considerable handicap in comparison with many other parts of Europe where megalithic structures, giant earthen barrows and enclosed fields are still in existence and this without mentioning sites where Roman aqueducts still carry water and where the presence of stone statues or monuments evokes memories of characters from ancient mythology. In Central Europe, visitors do not have frequently opportunity of direct contact with the witnesses of unwritten history. If a person happens to come to Bilani in middle Bohemia, where one of the most important excavation of Neolithic settlement area in Europe was undertaken, and where buried under layers of earth are located the vast residential areas of the first farmers, he or she will pass over them without noticing. The only tangible evidence of the existence of this exceptional site might be only some ploughed up fragments of Neolithic ceramic. One of the options that we have attempted to outline is the utilization of mobile applications. The mass adoption of smartphones that have a greater computing power than was necessary to send the first man to the moon opens a whole new dimension of options for presenting archaeological data. The combination of the real and the virtual world, easily accessible through the phone's display, enables leaving the PC monitor behind and represents a unique op opportunity to literally enjoy the knowledge available at archaeological sites directly in the field. Terms such as virtual or augmented reality no longer represents a million light years distant science fiction concept, but rather a new tool for public archaeology. And therefore, we used both for creating our mobile applications. Uh, virtual reality basically is the computer-generated simulation of three-dimensional image or environment that can be interacted with in a seemingly real physical way by a person using special electronic equipment. So that's on the left, on the right side you can see a 3D model with reconstruction of missing part of the old town hall in Prague. And augmented reality, which is on the left side, is a technology that super superposes a computer generated image on a user's view of the real world. Uh, that you can see the application our institute did for the exhibition of the anniversary of Czech Academy of Sciences and where we created, <coughs> created the live characters from the European prehistory. The application, the mobile application about the Bilani site encompasses altogether nine stocks distributed in the wider surroundings of Bilani to capture the main features and settlement components of the past Neolithic landscape. The application enables visitors to self-orientate themselves using the map with the individual stops, 
and the visitor's current position highlighted. And of course, to obtain basic text and visual information about the particular points of interest. All 3D reconstructions displayed follow results and documentation of almost half century of archaeological research that had taken place in Bilani since the 1950s. Based on the data obtained through the laser scanning, the selected landscape section was then modeled, particular features, georeference, and positioned exactly where the original construction stood. Visitors have a chance to see the different phases of the Bilani Neolithic settlement evolution, the nearby Rondel, Miskovica burial site, or the shape of the cultural landscape at the time displayed on their device. In order to facilitate the visitor's opportunity at the location of the prehistoric site to better understand and experience its 3D reconstructions, the gyro mode function was used for part of the application. It is therefore possible after implementing this feature of the application at a predefined location to set foot right in the middle of the Neolithic village and by moving the devs sideways to look all around it. This results in combining the real world, the, the virtual world, uh, comprising 3D reconstruction of Neolithic dwellings with the, with the real one, since the current form of the contemporary landscape has been incorporated in the model. Information panels set up next to the field base of the Institute of Archaeology include two markers allowing visualization of a full-size Neolithic burial and a 3D model of a vessel found in Miskovice. Flyers alerting visitors of the opportunity to undertake a journey into the past by way of this mobile application were printed and made available for tourists in the frequented information office in nearby town Kutná Hora, which is UNESCO heritage site. I will just wait a little bit to show that 3D model of the Neolithic burial. Mm -hmm. Now, how does it... So for this augmented reality application showing the Neolithic burial, for example, we used a system with a marker, which you can see here, which is a specific picture that the application is familiar with. In a scene, that is viewed through the camera, it attempts to locate this marker, to identify it, and to determine its position and orientation within the scene. Based on the information that it receives on the display panel of the phone, it then creates its desired 3D model, which is correctly positioned and orientated. Basically, the technological objective of transforming the archaeological features to virtual space necessitates two different methodological approaches. The first is transposing the movable artifacts, like the pottery or the grinding tools, and then the immovable one, <coughs> such ground object as pits, pose hole, etc., into a digital 3D format. While the second is the computer modeling of the immovable structures and their subsequent reconstruction. The method of laser scanning we primarily is primarily designed for, for digitizing of the movable artifacts, while 3D photogrammetry and 3D virtual modeling were applied at the immovable ones. Another virtual open-air museum <coughs> was put in use in Prague, where in 2014 <coughs> rescue excavations uncovered a part of Neolithic settlement, including relics of two long houses. The excavation results, plans, and geodetic localization were used to produce an ide ideal 3D reconstruction of the village and its vicinity. The application works analogously. The attached map highlights points where within the new built area, area 
users should start the particular virtual views in order to preserve the spatial context. Each of the 360 degree panoramatic views captures different part of the past settlement and by clicking on points marked within the displayed 3D reconstructions, information boxes pop up with explanation of particular features function or images of sample artifacts found locally. One of the views takes the user to the photogrammetry recorded excavation site, enabling explanation of rescue excavation process and detection of archaeological features. 3D photogrammetry applied consistently at the rescue excavation of a late Bronze Age settlement in Zálezlice in central Bohemia allowed creation of 3D models of all uncovered inhumation burials and settlement pits. The augmented reality application device for, the, for their presentation uses the already explained Marcusim principle. And at present, leisure, leisure shelters with inbuilt markers and information panels are being constructed along the frequent cycling road just a few hundred meters next to the site where the burials were uncovered. Within the context of rescue excavations, the results of which usually end up only as reports found in the archives of the relevant institutions, will enable their quick and easy presentation to the public through the virtual space, in which in turn will immediately shift the motive, motives for rescue excavations to another level and will help to public to understand the reasons why the rescue excavations are carried out. It is necessary to already start consider considering these options during the course of research and to obtain information database that could be utilized for their transformation into virtual world, specifically 3D photogrammetry, 3D laser scanning. When processing research data, it is possible to at least partially implement 3D reconstructions of found objects and 3D scans of found artifacts. Adherence to these principles can convey easily accessible and easy to comprehend data to the general public by means of mobile applications. We aim to demonstrate that it is possible to implement the virtualization of even those archaeological sites uh, at which the fieldwork was carried out a long time ago or which were destroyed during the rescue excavations. The overall purpose of these projects is, it, is its target focusing on public archaeology. One difficult reality is that cognition of the oldest even pre literary <coughs> history of human culture <coughs> remains within the closed professional academic and heritage management circles. Therefore, no direct relation exists between the sites and either the general public or the local community. Thereby, any effort to provide virtual access to the site represents an alternative and desirable approach. It would provide an easy and enjoy enjoyable way to obtain information and to experience the local genes loci. It will also help to break down the barrier between the public and the archaeological as either a science or one of the humanities. The goal is to engage the public and for this to lead an understanding of the value of our cultural and our historical heritage. Modern technologies essentially handed over to archaeology the keys to the gate through which it is possible to enter into alternative worlds of the past. For public archaeology, which is understood as an interactive interface between distant past and public, the results of the current development can be very important. Virtual travel in time may be soon available means of entertainment in which it will be possible to simultaneously reassure diachronic and cyclonic links of each individual with the depth of the past of his or her own country. Thank you for the attention. Thank you.